Hello and welcome to Fire of Learning. Thank you for joining us in this episode as we discuss where the names of fruits, vegetables, and even some other crops come from. Starting with tomatoes. Tomato comes from the word jitomat, which means the round fruit or the swelling fruit in Nahuatl, the language of the Aztecs. Interestingly, there were many different names thrown around for tomatoes at first in European languages, including golden apples. Coconut comes from combining the word nut with the Portuguese word coco, which meant something like grimacing face, so named because of the three indentations on the coconut shell that look like a face. The word for bananas probably came from the Wolof word banana, which itself likely came from the Arabic word banan, which meant fingers or fingertips, which they of course resemble when in bunches. Use that the next time someone offers you food. What can I get for you? I'd very much like to eat one of your fingers. Trust me, people will think you're cool. Dates actually have the same origin in Greek from doctolos, meaning finger, for the same reason, the elongated shape of the fruit. Although, the Greeks may have just taken this from a word in an unknown Semitic language that sounded similar but did not itself mean finger. Watermelons. It's no surprise, if you've ever eaten one, that they are named because of how watery they are. 92% water. In fact, it's thought that the ancient Egyptians used to grow them specifically to store water in the desert climate. Corn. Or maize. What's the difference? Maize is what the Taino called it. The Taino were one of the first indigenous groups of the Americas with whom Europeans made contact, so their word for it became predominant. Corn is a word that predates European knowledge of maize. It originally referred to the main cereal crop that an area produced, not necessarily a specific crop, so it could have also referred to something like wheat or oats. Because this was maize for many Native Americans, the English in America began to call it Indian corn, which stuck and evolved into just corn by the 18th century. The word lettuce actually comes from the Latin word lactua, which is related to the Latin word loc, which meant milk, like lactose. Probably because of the milky juice that the stock produces. Milky lettuce juice. Cauliflower comes from cavol fiore, which came from an old Italian dialect meaning flowering cabbages. As for cabbages, the word originally comes from the Latin caput, which meant head. So yes, a head of cabbage is a head of head. Radish comes from the Latin radix, meaning root. Pineapple. When the Spanish were introduced to the fruit, they called it the piña de indes, pine of the Indians, because it of course looks a bit like a pine cone. When it reached the English, they took this and combined it with apple, as the word apple referred to not only apples but fruit in general at the time. Most other languages besides English and Spanish though call the pineapple ananas, which means excellent fruit in the language of the Tupi. Oranges, from Naranja, the name for orange trees in Sanskrit. Oranges were not named after the color, the color was named after them. The first record we have of orange being used as a color in English comes from 1502. Before this, the English called the color yellow-red, or they used another orange substance, like saffron, to describe the color. Garlic, comes from the Old English gar, meaning spear, and lick meaning leek, a reference to the sharp leaves of the plant, with leeks being a close relative. Pomegranate comes from the medieval Latin pomum, meaning apple or fruit, and granatum, meaning seeded, and therefore seeded apple or fruit with many seeds. As a side fact, the French word for pomegranate is grenade, which is where we get the word grenade, actually. So if you're ever in France, make sure you don't get them mixed up. Blowing your dinner table to pieces is what the French would call a faux pas. Kiwi fruit were originally called Chinese gooseberries. However, in the 1960s, the New Zealand company Turners and Growers began to market them as kiwi fruit, partly because the exterior of the fruit resembles the national bird with which New Zealanders identify, the kiwi. The company claimed that actual gooseberries were unpopular and that the name therefore hurt sales. Zucchini is Italian for little gourd. The equivalent in Britain is courgette, which is French for essentially the same thing. Cherries. There is a region in Turkey which was called Kerasus when it was ruled by the ancient Greeks. It is thought that this was one of the first regions in which cherries were grown. Some have speculated that the name cherry comes from the name for this region, however, it seemed more likely to linguist Robert Beeks that the region was actually named after the cherries it produced, and that the word for cherries, carasos, has an even more ancient, unknown origin. 
Eggplants, as they are called in Americanese, were named in the 18th century after white cultivars which look very much like chicken's eggs. The English themselves, though, like most European languages, call them aubergines, from the Sanskrit word vatingana. How? Well, long game of telephone, I suppose. This word was originally from an unknown word in a Dravidian language. Cantaloupes. Canta lupo is Italian for singing wolf, but this actually likely has little to do with the fruit itself. Rather, it's probably the name of the region in which the crop was first cultivated in Europe. Some believe it was Cantalupo in Sabina in modern-day Italy, but this may be a misconception, as there are a lot of Cantalupos in Italy, and also people who have taken the name of these towns as surnames. Basil comes from the Greek Basilikon Futon, which meant the royal plant, as the herb may have been used in royal perfumes. Rosemary comes from the Latin Rosmarinus, with Ros meaning dew, and Marinus meaning of the sea. This is probably because the plant grows by the sea. Lavender, related to the Latin word lavare or lavare, which means to wash, a reference to its popular use in bathing. Walnuts, from the Old English whalenutu, meaning foreign nut, because it spread to the Anglo-Saxons from non-Germanic peoples from the continent. It has the same root, by the way, as the English name for the country of Wales, whom the Anglo-Saxons called foreigners. Oregano is from the Greek oros, meaning mountain, and ganos, meaning joy, i.e. joy of the mountain. Peaches come from the Greek persicone, meaning Persian, the Malone persicone being the Persian apple. The ancient Greeks believed they came from Persia, but they are actually native to China. Alright, I hope you're ready to rock and roll because it's about to get intense in here with these next two. Feel free to pause the video and do a few push-ups if necessary. First up, sweet potato and potato. Even though sweet potatoes and potatoes are actually from completely separate plant families, they have so much in common that they share the same name. Europeans came across sweet potatoes before potatoes. The Taino people of the Caribbean called the sweet potato batata. Potatoes were discovered soon after. The Quechua of South America called potatoes papa. The Royal Spanish Academy claims that these two words combined to create the word patata in Spanish, which became potato in English. Anyway, because sweet potatoes arrived in Europe first, they were actually called potatoes, or common potatoes, first for a time, with names like Virginia potatoes or white potatoes being used to distinguish what are now just potatoes from sweet potatoes. However, potatoes eventually became much more popular among English speakers than sweet potatoes, and so they usurped the name. Another question, maybe a bigger one, is what is a yam? In America and Canada, Yams are sweet potatoes. Certain types of sweet potatoes, anyway. There is confusion because the word yam is actually derived from the name for another completely separate crop grown mainly in sub-Saharan Africa that resembles sweet potatoes somewhat. It seems the name yam was just taken to distinguish softer, oranger varieties of sweet potatoes. There's a huge variety, actually, although all sweet potatoes are one species. True yams are uncommon in American grocery stores, so you're not likely to get them mixed up in the place where sweet potatoes are called yams. Round 2. Strawberries. This one seems like it would have an obvious origin, it does not. So, in summary, there are at least four possible origins for the name strawberry. The first is that when growing the berries, farmers would place straw underneath them to keep them from rotting in the mud. The problem with this is that the name actually seems to have predated the growing of strawberries in England and applied to wild strawberries. The earliest record we have of strawberry cultivation comes from France in the 14th century. The second possibility is that in many countries, people gather wild strawberries, which are smaller than garden strawberries, on pieces of straw. The third is that the seeds on the berries look like chaff. However, the fourth explanation, which was the favored explanation of strawberry expert George M. Darrow in his 500-page book The Strawberry, History, Breeding, and Physiology, is that the name actually doesn't come from straw. It originally was strewnberry, because the plant's runners are strewn all over the ground. English is the only language that calls them anything like strawberries, apart from the ones that adopted the English term, so we're not really able to look at other languages for comparison. Finally, I have saved the PG-13 example for last. 
There is a popular myth that the Nahuatl word for avocado, avocat, meant testicle. This is not true. It seems instead that the Aztecs used avocados as a euphemism to refer to them, similar to… well… I retrieved 34 examples that I was going to read out individually, but now I think that that may not be appropriate. Nor necessary. Beyond being the Nahuatl word for the fruit, the origin of the word avocat is not clear. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I invite you to come check out the rest of Fire of Learning, especially my History of Food and Agriculture series, in which I talk much more in depth about the history behind several of these fruits and vegetables, and to subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. To support the channel further, you may make a donation on Patreon, a special thanks to my current patrons listed here. I also run a science channel much like this called Lucinox, so be sure to check that out too. Thank you for watching.